It's the dead of winter, and here, in rural Minnesota, the weather's been pretty much what you'd expect. So I'm not too worried about that, though. I lived up there long enough to know how to properly prepare for the season. And plus, since I generally work remotely, I rarely have much reason to leave the house to breathe the elements, even when the weather isn't god-awful. As such, I'm expecting a rather uneventful few months, bundled up on my couch with my laptop and a steady supply of hot cocoa. The only downside being that I live out here by myself, the, I've never been the type to be bothered too much by the solitude. However, it would seem I'm not as alone out here as I thought I was. For the past few weeks now, I've been waking up each morning to find that, well, at some point in the middle of the night, someone's been building a snowman somewhere on my property. Now, every single day I wake up to find a new one without fail. Now, this would be weird enough on its own, but as I've mentioned, I live in rural Minnesota. So the nearest town is about 20 miles from here, and my nearest neighbor is over five. The snow right now is two feet deep, at a minimum. It's more than a little odd that someone would come all the way out here just to build a snowman, let alone in the middle of the night. For the past few weeks now, I've- oh shit. That being said, it didn't really bother me at first. I mean, from what I can tell from the traces left behind, the culprit seems to be a kid around the age of maybe like 12 or so. He always comes way of the forest that spans the land just north of my little plot. That in itself is odd, given the fact that I, I don't recall anyone living up that way. But it's not like I'm the most social person anyway. Wouldn't be a surprise to me if I just didn't hear about them moving in. I mean, besides, they're just snowmen. They aren't exactly the most threatening thing in the world. The snowmen themselves are actually pretty well made. I mean, they're more than a few levels above the clumsy, tossed-together lumps of snow that you usually see outside of some people's homes. Each of the three spheres that make up every snowman is perfectly formed, so much so that they almost look manufactured in a way. The kid didn't spare any expense on the decorations either. You see, each snowman has been outfitted with the works, several bits of clothing, scarves, mittens, hats, sturdy branches for limbs, and carefully crafted facial features made of stones and other bits like they retrieved from around the forest. Now, admittedly, I did find the fact that they were all made to be frowning and, and facing towards my house well, a, a little unnerving. I guess I could have just destroyed them or something if they just started to bother me, but I was reluctant to do so. I mean, it sort of felt like, like, I don't know, kicking over a kid's sandcastle on the beach was, I mean, unless you're some kind of sadist, is anything but a good feeling. And besides, they were harmless piles of snow. It wasn't like they were going to get in the way or anything. Unsettling or not, they they still weren't anything worth being seriously worried about. Well, I quickly changed my mind about that last night. See, after nearly a month of this going on, I was ready to confront this nightly visitor. I'd finished all the work I needed to get done that week, so I figured there wouldn't be any harm in pulling an all-nighter in order to try and catch the kid in the act. I still wasn't particularly bothered with what the kid was doing, but... I was starting to get a bit concerned. See, the temperature was dropping more and more below zero each night, and I was starting to worry about the kid's safety. I had my suspicions as to the reasons behind the kid's odd behavior, and I certainly didn't want to deal with the legal troubles that it would bring if they, you know, died on my property. I was hoping the weather would stay clear for my little stakeout, but I wasn't quite so lucky. As afternoon shifted into evening, the clear patch of weather that we'd been in for the past couple of weeks came to an end as the snowstorm rushed over the mountains and bore down on us. By the time night came around, the storm had begun in full. I could barely see more than a few yards out through my window, even with the high-powered flashlight I had on hand. I figured the kid wasn't going to be able to make it to his nightly trip on these conditions, but I decided to stay up just in case. It wasn't like I had anything better to do anyway. By the time 2am came rolling around, though, I had lost all traces of this previous enthusiasm. I was most of the way through a bottle of wine, and I had, I had long tired of shining my flashlight through my windows and only seeing the figures of the nearest snowmen. I had more than less convinced myself that this is about time to give up and turn in for the night. I felt compelled to check one last time, though, if only to satisfy the little stubborn bit of my mind that didn't want to admit that I'd wasted an entire evening. God, I wish I'd just gone to bed. Drawing in close to one of my windows, I slowly swept my flashlight across the yard. The storm was still going strong, but the wind, the wind had started to die down significantly. It had been fierce, but it seemed as if the storm would be brief too. 
I figured there was a good chance that it would be done by morning. The visibility had cleared up significantly, and I could now see some of the snowmen that littered my yard. In spite of the previously howling winds, not a single one of them had been tipped over. After slightly melting and then refreezing once more over the past couple of days and nights, the snowmen had all formed a resilient outer shell of ice. It could take more than a run-of-the-mill blizzard to make them budge. They'd probably last till spring. And somehow, they, they almost seemed closer to my house than before. Perhaps the decreased visibility was making me a bit claustrophobic or something like that. It's hard to say. I did find it a bit jarring, though. All the same. Caught up in my thoughts, I almost didn't notice it. A flicker of moment, something something in between the snowmen that most certainly hadn't been there before. I did a double take, not, not quite sure if I had seen what I thought I did. I swept the beam back towards the spot where I thought that I'd seen it, but it wasn't there anymore. If it had been there to begin with, that is. Perturbed, I continued to sweep my flashlight across the lawn. I had almost convinced myself that my lack of sleep was starting to get to me when I heard something. A rustling just to the left of my window. The beam of my life quickly flicked over to where I thought the sound had come from, but I was only able to just barely catch sight of it before it disappeared around the corner of my house. This time, I was certain of what I had seen. A flicker of movement, a human figure, and the smallish barefoot of a child just before it disappeared out of sight. I cursed under my breath, pulling on a cloak and a pair of boots. Not only was this kid out in this mess, but he was barefoot, if not worse. Where in the heck were this kid's parents, and why the heck weren't they keeping a better eye on him? I wasn't exactly eager to throw myself out into the blizzard, but I knew I had to. I wasn't even sure if this kid knew where the heck he was. And I sure as hell wasn't going to let this kid die out here on my lawn. Shivering, I went out my back door, ducked around the side of the house that I thought the kid was on, and hoped that he'd be close to the house still so I wouldn't have to venture too far off into the blizzard. But I wasn't so lucky. I found his tracks. They were quickly being covered up by the falling snow but were still clear enough to tell that he'd wandered off further into the blizzard. Letting off more than a few expletives, I hurried off after the kid before I completely lost track of him. I followed the tracks further out, towards the edge of my property. I, I debated calling out for the kid, but decided not to, worried that I might spook him. I strained my eyes and ears to catch some sort of trace of him, but it wasn't easy in the howling blizzard. The snow muffled everything. The wind drowned everything out, and my flashlight beam could only reach so far. I'd walked for a couple of minutes, and all I had seen were the snowmen. The tracks were fading fast, and I was worried that I might lose the trail entirely. It was then that I heard it. Sort of rustling and scraping, not like a small animal trying to dig itself a burrow. It was the kid. It, I mean, it had to be. I did my best to quiet my steps as I crept closer. We were near the woods at the edge of my property now. I near the source of the sound, which seemed to be coming from behind a few bushes. Quietly making my way around, I swept my light across the edge of the dark forest, hoping that the kid wouldn't run away again at the sight of me. See, I only see it now in retrospect that my entire perception of what had been going on was based on assumptions. I'd come across something unusual and unexplained in my otherwise normal everyday life, and I'd automatically done my best to rationalize it. I mean, sure, I may have felt uneasy about what was going on, but... But I never felt like I was in any sort of danger. But when my flashlight beam settled on that... That... Thing... I hunched over in the snow, I quickly realized... That I've been taking things far too lightly. The first thing I realized is that... It wasn't just barefoot. It was completely naked. From head to toe, there wasn't a thread to be seen anywhere. That was the least of my concerns, though, as I, as I realized under further examination that what I was looking at may not even be human. The skin was white with, with tinges of blue, barely indistinguishable from the snow around it. Its icy hide was pulled taut over a bony frame, which seemed to almost poke through in spots. Its spine stood out in particular, its bony ridges traveling down its hunched back and leading one's eye towards its strange, short and fleshy tail. It had the overall shape and size of a human child, but it was anything but. It was much more like a naked mole rat or some sort of hairless cat. 
It was bent over it, its gnarled, root-like hands clawing the surrounding snow together and forming it into a large ball. Its movements were frantic and erratic, like a rodent or a cockroach scurrying across the floor. It was so outside the realm of anything I was expecting, my mind couldn't figure out how to react. That quickly changed, though. The, the flashlight hadn't alerted the creature for whatever reason, but, but I wasn't able to mask my shock and my gasp of breath at the sight of it. It froze and it quickly whipped around to face me. Its face... It, it wasn't right. The proportions were all off. The eyes were too small, the mouth was was far too big, the nose was practically non-existent. Its beady black eyes were fixed on my own, and its wide mouth, full of teeth like shards of ice, were fixed in its snarl. My mind caught up with itself, and I felt a fearful chill rush through me. It was so much colder than the blizzard around us. It let out a screech, not unlike nails on a chalkboard. I screamed right back, falling backwards as I desperately backpedaled away from it. My flashlight flicked like crazy before going out completely. A few frantic smacks got it working again, and I focused it once more on where the creature had been, but it was nowhere to be seen. I had no idea where it went, but I was, I was certainly not sticking around to find out. I rushed back to the snowmen to my house, and I swear, I swear they were all looking at me. Their frowns were deeper, they were angrier even. I didn't waste any time examining them in any great detail, though. Quickly, I made my way through the house. I locked all the doors. I closed all the curtains and blinds before, before hurtling up on the couch and, and trying to shiver the chill of fear away. I had my fill of beady black eyes for the evening, on snowmen or otherwise. The night was uneventful after that, thankfully. I fell asleep at some point, my fatigue overcoming my fading panic. I've been trying to convince myself that last night was all just a bad dream or something like that, but but I haven't quite been able to manage it. I mean, I just... I don't really know what to do about any of this. I mean, I guess I, I could call the cops. But even if they believed me, it's not like they could they could even make it out here. The roads are impassable this far out. Not really sure if I'm in any sort of danger or anything, really. That creature... I mean, it could have been just as scared of me as I was of it. Who knows? All this is just so far outside of my realm of experience. I don't feel confident enough to even guess. I'm sure as hell not leaving the house anytime soon. I mean, you see, when I woke up this morning, all the snowmen had disappeared without a trace. The snow around where they stood completely undisturbed, and it's, it doesn't look like they were knocked over. They weren't carried away or anything like that. So I don't know what's going on. But I'm not setting a foot outside until I know for sure. Until I'm certain where they've gone. Hey there, kids, and happy holidays. It's me, Mr. Creepypasta. And I just wanted to tell you guys thank you for watching tonight's video. If you enjoy watching videos here on YouTube, then you should check out the Mr. Creepypasta Storytime Podcast, which is available on Spotify and on iTunes and on Google Play and everywhere like that. If you enjoy listening to Mr. Creepypasta Storytime Podcast, you'll enjoy watching it on YouTube because it's the same show. You guys are both hearing the exact same thing at the exact same time. Also, thank you guys for supporting me on Patreon or on Popbase. You guys who are the top supporters on Patreon especially, thank you so much, like Joey Gilbert, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milstead, Chaminsky, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, G Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Asia, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Nico Kyle, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Dante Rao, Last Blade Song, The Ginger Bros, Don Mulemeister, Eliminator 86, Nubsky, Finley E. Hopkins, Steampunk Sinner, Rafael Rodriguez, Optimistic Avocado, and Dr. Strawberry. Everyone there, as well as in the description down below. Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to also follow me on Popbase, where you can get a couple of different updates here and there and play games along with me, then you can do so on your phone. It's on Android and on Apple. And if you guys are looking for something like a hot beverage, such as, say, a tea for the cold winter months, then my wife is still selling teas over at Etsy.com slash shop slash Ivory Monocle Tea including a Mr. Creepypasta tea that has me on it, dabbing. D don't actually, actually, if you do order that tea, request that sticker because we made it, but she didn't want me to put it on the, on the tea because she said it wasn't professional. I think it's the, whatever. 
Check back throughout the entirety of the holiday season for more horror stories every single day. Forever. Sweet dreams, kids. <laughs>